All right. All right. So the first thing I need you to do is I need you to prepare yourself weekly. All right. So I need you every single week to wake up and during the process of that week, I need you to have a sense of urgency. Something has to get done in that week. All right. So I just write this down. So there should never be a week in your life that you're just going through the motions. Like every single week, there should be something specific that you're trying to accomplish. All right. And then there should be something monthly that you're trying to accomplish. All right. Every single minute of the day, we should be unleashing our gift on somebody. Somebody getting it. I, I know we're going to talk about this in a minute, but I know what my superpower is. And CJ calls it a superpower. I know what my superpower is. So when I get in the elevator with you, you may not speak, but I'm speaking why? Because that's my superpower. All right. Somebody like, E, why are you speaking to them and they're not speaking to you? I'm, I don't live my life based on what other people do. I live my life based on my superpower. So when I speak to people, people are my superpower. So if there's another human in the building, I'm, you getting it, All right? So, so I wake up every morning, I'm going to unleash my gift, but then I have to have a goal because if I'm not careful, I'm just unleashing my gift without a goal. It just is not going nowhere. And so I have to give my goal, my gift, I have to give it a sense of, purpose, a sense of order, a sense of direction, right? So every day when you get up, you're weak to have a direction that this is what you're seeking to get done in that week. This is how much money you should make. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. Look, look, the reason why the $100,000 a week didn't come to you because you didn't assign it to come to you. You didn't assign it. So you just randomly hoping it's going to come. Now you have to assign it. You have to tell it which bank account it's going to. Oh, come on, somebody. You, you don't go to the bank and just give them $100,000. They want to know, is it your savings? Is this going into your check-ins? Is this the joint boy? Right? So, so every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year, you should have a destination for your time, for your money, for your relationships, right? You like, my kid's bad. No, don't say your kids are bad. You, in your mind, decide what you want them to do, what you want them to be, right? Where you want them to go, and then you, you just keep speaking that, all right? So for somebody at the end of this event, what are you hoping will happen? What are you hoping would happen? Right? Look, I had somebody in Dallas, my man, I had multiple people. One dude just came up to me, put $500 in my pocket. I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. But what do you hope would happen with this seed that you're giving me? So you just gave me $500 for a reason. What do you, you know? I don't need $500. Right? So I have a destination for it. I already know who I'm going to give it to. Because I know who needs it. But I want to know why did you give it to me? What are you hoping what happened with this seed that you're giving me? Right? So that's the first thing I need you to do. Because I got some slides, but I don't need you to waste my slides. I'm being real. I put these together for you. I don't need you to waste them. So what do you want to happen at the end of this conference? Right? Somebody raise their hand for me. One person. Good. Yes. What are you looking to happen? at the end of these two days. Good. 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 I love it. So she said that, um, thank you. She said that she's around a lot of people, but they are one group, they parasites. So they take it from her and they're not giving nothing back to her. Right. So I don't even I look, you said she didn't say that she did because I know humans. I know human beings. Right. So if you're giving, you have one group of people who take from you and they give nothing back. 
That's the group y'all got to stay far away from. You got, you got to grow up and you got to remove them. I don't know what it is, how you grew up. You just feel like you got to look out for people that ain't looking out for you. What happens with parasites, if they keep taking, they call your bank account. You did what with your bank account when you keep taking and you can't overdraft. And what do they do to your bank account? They close it. No, I'm saying that's the same thing happening in your life. You just, you just not getting it. So people keep taking, 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 and they're going to overdraft your joint, and then a part of your life is going to close. Right? Which means that you won't be getting blessings in that area. It won't flow. Right? So we got parasites. Then we got commensalism. That's the group that we give to. They're not bad people. They don't take, but they don't do nothing. That's the worst group. They just neutral. They don't do nothing. They have absolutely nothing to give you. Now they don't, they're not bad people. They don't mess nothing up. They just don't do nothing. They just like your car just in neutral the whole time. It's terrible. It's wasted energy, wasted gas. It's just a waste. What you want is mutualism. You want those relationships that when you pour, you get fed. Right? And it doesn't necessarily mean y'all going to do the same thing. Like my grandmother wasn't necessarily a millionaire. But when you sat to the table, you got fed. And it tastes better than, amen. For real, like I don't even really do fried chicken no more. Because nowadays it's just the skin. The skin is good, but not the bone. When my grandma used to soak that joker in buttermilk for multiple days. The season stick to it better. This generation, y'all just go get the chicken. Y'all don't even want to clean that joint. Y'all just go get it, put it in a little bag like it's some magic in the bag. <laughs> you acting like it's magic in the Ziploc bag. <laughs> you feel me? You done put a little flour in the bag and some little seasoning, shook it up for 20 minutes, and then tossed it in. The grease ain't even hot yet. Right, so I was like, I can't eat chicken no more because my grandma, it for li literally, like you be sucking on the bone. And I didn't know why people would suck on the bone until I started eating out. And it's like, oh, this is just regular chicken. Right? So she wasn't a millionaire, but there were some things that she did phenomenally well. And so it was a back and forth. Right? So what we have to get to is mutualism. We have to get to what? That every relationship brings something. Good. How many of you are in relationships where it's like a lot of parasites. Let me just see your hands. I need to know who I'm talking to. It's a lot of parasites. Just take, take, take. Good. How many of you are in relationships where really it's 51, 49? It's like you giving 51, they giving 49. They fighting you. They giving 51 and you giving 49. How many relationships do we have like that? Good. All right. So we're going to the parasites. And I know it's going to be hard for you, but you got to cut them, period, because they're going to suck the living daylights out of you. And then when you die, they might not even make it to your funeral. I'm just being real. They might not even make it to your funeral because they busy trying to find the next person to latch on to. That second group, I don't know what you want to do with them. That's your business. <laughs> right? right? That, however you want to handle that, handle that. But what I want you to do at this conference is look around and leave with at least two or three people who can pull their own weight. That's what I want you to look for. When you leave this place, I want you to find at least two or three people. Not that was a bomb event. No, I want you to find two or three because they're like-minded people in this room. Right? Oh, uh, come on. Y'all didn't hear what I said. They are in this room. So on your bathroom break, lunch break, whatever little break you take, I want you to, whatever you do, you pray, meditate, however you do what you do that would allow you to find those people, find those people, right? And I'm going to tell you why, and we're going to get started. Because it was those people that blew me up. Now be careful because you don't know what those people look like. Right? So, so, so. One of the individuals that helped me to go from being a motivational speaker to a businessman was Dan Gilbert. Right? And it was, it was, at that time, it wasn't even 51, 49, because I didn't really know what I could give him, but I found out what I could give him. 
right? So initially, my job was just to speak to him and his people. So I had, I'm sorry, Tony Knuckles, Tony Knuckles, I'm sorry. Write that down, Tony Knuckles, because Tony Knuckles is the one who introduced me to Quicken Loans, right? He was like, um, Tony Knuckles, like human resources, like um, development guy, right? Like the top African-American male in the whole group. Okay, write this down. You will need a butler. That's what I want you to look for, pray for. You will need as many butlers as possible in 2019, right? And butlers, they open doors for you. So that's what you're going to need, right? So, so, so Joseph, as sweet as Joseph was, I mean, he had a gift. He was talented, the Bible character. He was sweet, talented, gifted, could do all kinds of stuff. He was a leader, but he was in jail, right? So that's some of you. You gifted, you talented, but you in jail. Like, for real, you gifted, you talented, you got a lot going on, but you are economically in prison right now. You're living from check to check. Right? So look, I'm not tripping. This is all you need. Joseph had two people. One was a parasite. He took from him, said he was going to do something for him, never did it. But the other dude remembered and was like, oh, yeah, Pharaoh Joseph, he could hook you up. So he put in a word for Joseph. Joseph got out of prison for a meeting, and the rest is history. And so for some of you in this room, you're struggling. No, relax. You just need to wait on your butler, and that butler's going to open up a door for you. But you got to do me a favor. Stop trying to find the butler. That's not your job. That's what a lot of you doing wrong. You calling, knocking on doors, you getting on folks' nerves. No, I'm just being real. You're getting on their nerve because you're trying to create something before it's time. Just wait. Joseph wasn't like um, uh, emailing them. <laughs> he wasn't texting them. Yo, bro, you told me when you get out of jail, you was going to look out for me. Where you at? <laughs> you feel me? Where you at, bro? Y'all lie. <laughs> he didn't say that. He just kept doing what? What he was doing. He just kept dominating in his lane. And then one day he got a knock. Hey, Joseph. They're like, what's up? He got some new clothes, some shaving cream. He go, take this. He was like, what's this for? You, you gonna need to get, ah. Somebody in this room today, you about to get a new gear, just a whole new, my man, they like, don't wear that no more. He's like, why not? I wear this every day. Well, where you going? You can't wear that no more. You about to go. <laughs> You got, you about to go before the king. You got new gear. You gonna have to shave. You about to go somewhere you ain't never been before. Hey, dear. Welcome to my channel, Fresh Personal Growth Motivation. Today I speak New Destination 2024. This seat that you are giving just gave me $500, right? So I have a destination for give it to because I know who needs it. But I want to know why did you give up? Happened this seat first thing, I don't need you. To waste my slides together for you, I don't want. Do you want to happen? Somebody raise a hand for me, person. These two days, good, good and good and good. I love it. So she said. You see, she said that she around people, and but they are one group and parasites, so they take. And I don't even I look, say I know humans. 